Hello, everyone. Uh, that's a little bit loud. OK. Um, I'm Tyler. Uh, I work at Uber on the Go developer experience team. Um, and I work with I'm Dongpeng. I'm so also the same team. Cool. So today, we were planning on making this talk a little more interactive than the other talks. So I first wanted to get a show of hands on who writes Go code generally in their day to day. OK, less. Less than I was expecting, actually. Um, and then of those, how many of you use Rules Go and Gazelle? OK, so most of them, as expected. Um, so today, we are planning on talking about a few of the major pain points we've seen over the past couple of years, um, and then talk about some of the workarounds we have or potential solutions we're thinking about. And then uh, while we touch on these, we're hoping to get some input from those other users of these um, or other uh, people who have in, interacted with these problems um, and see what your thoughts are on this, as this is a community day. All right. OK, so the first um, issue that we've run into is the design of NoGo, which is our uh, static analysis tool for code. Basically, it analyzes code to make sure things are um, structured properly and um, s similar to uh, linter. But it's built inside of the compile action in um, the Go compile PKG, which means that currently it breaks uh, your build when you start compiling it and, and there's an error there. Um, and this works well for small repos uh, because the user gets feedback pretty quickly. Um, but when you have uh, millions and millions of lines of code, uh, the, every, single, um, every single compile action is dependent on this no-go config file. So this single file is, um, breaks the cache whenever it changes for all of these compile actions. So we've found this to be particularly painful. Um, and internally, we've found workarounds um, to, to uh, make this a little less painful. Um, I'll let Zhang Peng talk a little more about um, these these workarounds. Yeah, so um, like Tyler said, we have the logo has to be configured globally. You have uh, the, this global list of logo um, analyzers, but if we have a monorepo, we have hundreds of teams, and some of the teams have they are very team specific logo analyzers. There's no way for them to configure locally for their team. They have to go to our team's approval saying, hey, I want to add this tiny local uh, analyzer just for our team, just to include this part. And this is very painful. And when, whenever they need to change, OK, I want to include this file or exclude that file, it invalid the whole catch of the whole monorepo. And we have this um, change target calculator to calculate all the changes that's affected by every line of change. But once you have edited the go no go the change, the change target calculator returns every go target for the whole monorepo. Basically, it means that we have to review the whole monorepo. So we basically have to add a special logic to our change target calculator saying that ignore all the changes of no go the JSON. This is more like a hack than a regular a, a good solution. So what we are looking for is that if we can implement the no-go analyzer to be a way so that we can um, break down into specific libraries. One thought from, actually, the, the, the design uh, was mentioned in one of the Jay Connors uh, posts, saying that there can be uh, break down into the top-down analyzers or bottom-up analyzer. Basically, either configure a no-go analyzer for target, and it will apply to all the analysis to everything it depends on. This is called top down. And then the bottom up is the other way around. Like if you configure it for one target, then everything depending on the target automatically get that no go analyzer. So this is much a nicer way of having the, the, the current situation. And the other way, way to uh, avoid this cache issue is by using no go as a validation actions. So basically break the no go out of the compilation action. It means that first, if you break no go, if no go finds error, the compilation still goes on. And the other is that if you change the no go configuration, it doesn't embed the compilation um, hash because compilation and linking is the most uh, expensive part. So 
uh, one of the thing is one of the the compilation the uh, validation action has already a pull request opening is in progress and we still call for contribution of the top down or bottom up analyzer or any other uh, ideas that could make logo be more local and team specific great i think for the interest of time we'll move the discussion to the end um so the next large pain point we've uh, hit a lot is the Go modules not working properly with generated code. Um, so what this means is if there is a certain Go dependency that doesn't exist in source code, but it's generated from like a proto library or something, um, that import path will not be recognized by Go modules. And so when you run Go mod tidy, it will pull in these extra dependencies that don't exist and it will fail to download them and then it will break the build. So um, yeah, we've had to find workarounds for this um, as this is pretty common uh, across many repos that use Go with Gazelle. Um, so I guess I'll first talk about the first solution. I'll move it on to uh, Jean Peng for the second. But the first solution is you just check in all your generated code. Um, uh, this is not a great solution because when you edit the proto library that generates the Go file, uh, you need some sort of validation to show that that generated code has been properly updated, um, which is why we came, um, we solved it with this other hack. So yeah, so the checking in generated code doesn't work for Uber. Our, our, generated, our generated code are several times larger than our regular Go code. So if we check in the generated code, our Git repository explode. Um, and we have a separate talk about how to optimize Git repository. But even without generated code, we already need a lot of optimization on the Git itself. So we can generate, uh, we can check in generated code. So what we did is actually um, try to work around the limitation of Go Mod Tidy. The, the main thing is actually Go Mod Tidy trying to uh, see if it can resolve all the dependencies in the input uh, from the source code. And what it's looking at is actually the import statement of every Go file. And whenever it sees uh, imports that cannot be looked up in the same repository or resolved from internet, it will fail. And that's the case for our generated code because it, you can't find those generated code on the internet. And um, so what we are doing is that we have special tool to scan all the, the source, uh, source files in, in the repository. And we basically, uh, prepare a special Go file containing all the import, import path that's um, in, the, in the whole repository. But during the process, we filter out all the things that already known to, to Bezel. The things that is in the repository, checking the re manually written code. The generated code that's already declared in Bezel target. That, so if, for example, if for those Go proto library, you already have the import path there, so it's known to Bazel. Or the third party libraries that already declare in the Go repository rules, it's also known to Bazel. So basically we take all the import path, all the imports minus all the uh, imports that known to Bazel and then prepare their special file and then run the Go mod tidy in that file, which will produce the Go to mod file and Go to some file. Then we copy it back to our monorepo. So in the monorepo, it looks like a regular Go module file, but the actual Go mod type is not running in the Go in the monorepo. It's in the shadowed space. Yeah. So there's there's been discussion previously if we can try to move this logic into the Go tool, um, the Go mod tool, but it seems to be pretty tightly coupled with the the Go module source code. Um, so. That there's definitely an ask on uh, other teams if if they've found solutions to this that we haven't, um, but that that has definitely been a big pain point for us. All right, moving on to our last discussion. Um, I'll make this quick. From with migrating to BZL mod, we've noticed that our module.bazel gets really really large, um, and the main reasons for this are that in Go we load each um, external dependency with a use repo argument. Um, and this is because in Go, we don't know the list of labels that are gonna be available from that target. Um, 
at the beginning. So we have to load them as a, we have to download them and look through the, the whole, um, the dependency to know what, what labels are in there. So, um, so we have tons of use repo arguments and this has been made, um, easier with, with the creation of what will once be basil mod tidy, we think. Um, but another big issue is we have a lot of overrides. So we have about uh, a thousand direct dependencies uh, and a lot of them we have to give special gazelle directives. Um, and also we have to add patches and things to hundreds of, of different places. Um, and now we use our repository uh, directory structure with owners or metadata files to restrict reviewership to different code paths. Um, and so we say, oh, if you change this code path, you have to get review from this team. But this becomes much more difficult if all of the patches are being applied in one file. Um, we no longer have this control. We hit more merge conflicts um, and it's a bit harder to ma maintain unless we come up with so some dynamic analysis of the file. Um, so yeah, I'll let you talk about the labels. Uh, yeah, so um, one of the solution that um, actually Fabian proposed was to have that um, macros to convert the info part of Go into basal labels. In that case, we don't need the long use repos uh, arguments. And one of the work in progress uh, is um, from basal team is to be able to load other BZL files into module basal file. So that we, in, future, in future, we can hopefully split up the module the basal file into maybe a dozen or maybe a hundred files belong to each team. That will make it shorter to um, read. Um, all right, that is all of our stuff. So yeah, questions and comments, uh, thoughts on from your teams if you've hit similar things. Yeah, you got it. So where was the question? Maybe first of all, let's uh, give a hand to our speakers. And then any questions? All right, then. Thank you very much.